Let's focus on what's going on right now around the state and talk specifically about the business side of things. And this is a planning time, isn't it? This is a time you may not necessarily have a detailed an elaborate plan that's uh, every single tactical move is quantified and plugged into some kind of a, a flow of, of some sort. Now is not the time for that. But now is the time to identify the one big thing. <laughs> the one big thing, right? In, in, as we go through 2022 now and head into 2023, the key is what, are, what, what is the one big thing? When our name comes up in a, 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 in a conversation, what do other people say? When our salespeople are dragging in from off the field and they had a bad day and so on, they look at each other and say, if we only just had, right, whatever it is. Now, there'll be some people that'll say, well, you know, we need, we need to upgrade our technology, which is probably true, probably true. But it's really interesting, just something to kind of balance that idea out. Productivity has not increased as a result of all this incredible technology that's been woven into the, 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 the fabric of our organizations over the last, well, say five to 10 years. Really, <laughs> surprisingly, not much productivity improvement, despite all the, uh, the features and the cool things that are going on, artificial intelligence. You know, you would think that that would add a tremendous amount of productivity, but not really so, not really so. so we want to think carefully about this stuff and not just, uh, you know, just relapse into some kind of a cliche and say, ah, well, you know, we'll put a new CRM in next year and then that'll be the deal. and That'll kind of wrap up the technology piece. You know, when you talk to young folks that come out of uh, college, uh, the word digital transformation comes up a lot. But there are a lot of business owners that say, I, you know, I don't know what really digital transformation is. So I want to tell you this. We are going to have a couple of people on the show to specifically discuss that. I think we know in broad terms what it means, but we're gonna get into that in a little greater detail at the next show. But I wanna to talk to you right now. Let's say, for instance, you got your team around. Everybody's kind of in now. They're in the office. They're not working out of their home right now. And you say, you know, you guys, we, we gotta do some planning here. We have to figure out where we're going. We're just kind of <laughs> sitting here in a passive fashion. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna give you seven tips, things you could kind of pick up and throw out to the team and say, you know, this is what I'm thinking we should be probably doing right now. Number one, reimagine your company's place in the world. And I use that word world consciously. So th think broadly, <clears throat> who's going to say, wow, that company back in that period of time, 2021, 2022, wow, they, they really changed the landscape of our industry. What would you have to do for something like that to happen, all right? So, so think about, your, the, the word positioning was a big word back in the 80s and 90s. I want you to think carefully about your positioning, who you are and who you're trying to become. Number two, embrace and create value via ecosystems, all right? We were talking just a few minutes ago about Nebraska as a, being an ecosystem. This is the number two piece of advice when you read Harvard Business Review and other interesting publications we all respect. Try to think closely about joining an ecosystem. Number three, build a system of privileged insights. This is very interesting, with your customers. You know, over the last 25 years, I've conducted about maybe 30, 35 projects where I conduct research. I go out, close the door, right? I'm in, a, I'm in an office with a customer of one of my clients, and I start asking questions. And initially, they're softball questions, but eventually they get more and more, and more difficult. And out of that, often, not always, but often, you get insights from them about how they see, well, my client, the industry, and themselves, right? So you catalog this, these, these really profound insights and you share them periodically with your client and other people that are appropriate. And it really just, just kind of explodes. People go, oh man, I gotta keep that in mind every day. Every day, I hadn't really thought about that. That's fundamental to who we are. Number four, make your organization outcome oriented. So we set up the process and you work together and I work together and we have a team every other week, we do this and this and this and this. And then after, after you know, three months, somebody pops in and says, 
What have we gotten done? Do we have an outcome? Have we got something tangible we can grab onto? So we got to keep thinking all the time about where is this taking us and, and, and what are we getting out of it? Continuing, invert the focus of your leadership team. This is a very interesting thing. The focus is usually at the top, like at the top of a pyramid, right? And the boss is up there looking down at everybody. But what's really interesting is take that period or a pyramid, flip it over, so all the people at the lower level are looking at, at the layers between them and the boss, and ultimately at the boss, and saying, hmm, we're, look, we're looking at this from a different perspective. We're in the field. We're actually face-to-face -face with these customers, and we have some insights. Do all these other people in this company have the ability to absorb them and integrate them and, and, and act upon them? So it's, it's a wonderful concept. Reinvent the social contract with your people. In other words, relationships, the relational dimension. This is a time when it's important for bosses to appreciate and recognize people for who they really are and honor them for who they really are in your culture. The social contract has to be there. Don't, they're not cogs, they're not a pieces of meat. They have feelings and emotions and insecurities that bosses need to attend to. And then finally, Disrupt, this is a challenge, disrupt your own leadership approach. Think about it for a minute. If you're a, a command and control kind of boss and you've run companies like that for 30 years or whatever, it's a wonderful time to say, wait a minute, I'm gonna, I'm, this is going to be chapter two for me as a manager and as a leader. Disrupt it. Think about how else, could, what, what if I were a, server, a servant leader, right? That's a whole different paradigm. What can I do for you, Mr. Uh, employee? Huh? How can I help you succeed? Be happy in your job. What can I do for you? Right? That's a long ways away from a lot, where a lot of the, uh, the business owners that we talk to around the state, that's not their perception. But you, surprisingly, a lot of them are open, especially if they're trying to attract Gen Y, Gen Z, and, uh, and really move the culture ahead. Do something special. Inject some passion and purpose into their culture. All right. Well, those are seven reasonably good uh, tenets or principles of strategic planning. They give us a lot of option and fluidity, a lot of good thought, pull people together. This is what the Nebraska partners are doing, and many, many consultants do this. It's a very good uh, exercise. And I'd like you to come back here next, next time, next show, uh, when Wild Business Nebraska is talking deeper, going even deeper about strategic planning going forward in 2022, and getting up off the sofa, getting up off the couch, and making it happen confidently, decisively, and with true vision that you can articulate to your team. I'm Lynn Hinderrocker right here on Wild Biz Nebraska. We've had a great show. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Probably Bruce Aaron will be here. I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>